Okay, um, just a quick notice. We've had to update our um, table of Laplace transforms. Of course, this is the basic definition of the Laplace transform. And I don't think we can get it all in during the single viewing, but these are the functions here, including cosine of x. And here are the new ones that we have added. Hyperbolic sine of kx. That is equal to k divided by s squared minus k squared. And notice how similar that is to the hyperbolic, to the sine of kx. This is k over s squared plus k squared. Here we have k over s squared minus k squared. And likewise, for the hyperbolic cosine of kx, we have s over s squared minus k squared. If this was the trig function, the cosine of kx, then it would be s over s squared plus k squared. And then, in the last video, we also derived an expression for this type of function, a constant raised to the power of x, or a constant raised to x, where x is multiplied by another constant, and that is its corresponding Laplace transform. So that's our table of transforms to date, and in this video, and the subsequent ones, we thought we'd take some more practice now in finding inverse Laplace transforms. And we're not going to have a time to go through all of these problems in a single video. In fact, uh, Few of these problems that we have here are really gems, and we might have to take a video dedicated just to a single problem to go all the way through it. But let's see how many we can do here. Um, our first one is f of s equals minus 2 divided by 3s minus 4. And we want to find inverse Laplace transform. So if you look at your table of transforms, there is no, there is none that we have listed where s has a coefficient other than 1. So we factor the 3 out, and this would be minus 2 over 3 times s minus four-thirds, and we can rewrite it like this, two-thirds up here over s minus four-thirds. Now it should be pretty obvious, hopefully, what this is equal to. Here then, this is going to be two-thirds minus two-thirds times e to the plus four thirds x. So that should be it for that one. Um, let's see, we also had one over s squared minus h. So f of s equals one over s squared minus 8, and notice now that here we have something squared minus a number, not plus a number, so you should be thinking along the lines of hyperbolic sine or cosine, um, and you should be thinking probably of the hyperbolic sine, because there's no s up here. If it was a hyperbolic cosine, then you'd have an s term up there. But if you look at it, for what it is for the hyperbolic uh, cosine, for the Laplace transform of the hyperbolic cosine of kx, that's equal to k over s squared minus k squared. So what's up here in the numerator has to be the square root of that, and up here we only have one. But we could obviously modify it like this, f of s 
equals over s squared minus 8. If we just put square root of 8 there, we can do that provided we also divide by the square root of 8. Then once we do that, then we can say the inverse the Laplace transform. That will equal 1 over the square root of 8 times the hyperbolic sine of kx. But k is the square root of 8. So we have it like that. That is, you can write that if you want to, as 2 times the square root of 2. Either way, it's entirely correct. We just had to recognize when we looked at this problem that we would have to multiply top and bottom by the square root of it. Then once we do that, we're all set to take this inverse Laplace transform. So those two first ones that were pretty straightforward actually. And here we have one, the third one. 3s minus 4 divided by s squared plus 16. Okay, so f of s and probably if we can write off the bat, let's put this into two parts that would definitely be the way to go. So we have this we write it like that and now we should be all set. Because then what we can do in this situation, yes, just take the three out if you want to. Now we have it here for the cosine. This would be three times cosine of the square root of that number. So that's four times x minus, and this is the sine. Here is k squared, and there's a square root right there. So that would be minus sine of 4x. And that would be it for this one. So again, that goes first three here. Those are pretty basic to sort of get us warmed up. Um, here for this one, we have 7s squared plus 27 divided by s squared plus 9s. Um, there's no convenient tricks that we can use with that like we did with this one. Here we had to use the uh, technique of partial fractions. And for this one, here we have s squared minus 1 quantity squared. And that doesn't fit any sign or uh, with an s here, but this squared sign throws us off down here. So this one we had to use a technique of partial fractions, and for this one, in order to set it up for that, we had to realize this in itself is the difference of two squares. So we have s plus 1 times s minus 1, that's this, and then this quantity is squared. So that equals s plus 1 squared times s minus 1 squared. So when we get ready to perform our technique of partial fractions, we have linear factors, but the linear factors are squared. So that makes this a little bit more involved. And you can tell this by looking at this one. This one is a little bit more involved. So come back, join us for the next video, and we'll tackle this problem here. And then we'll see how far we can get solving these two. So come back, join us for that video, and we'll try and solve some more problems.